We'll call this uh, meeting to order. The purpose of our meeting tonight is uh, for a public hearing on our budget for fiscal year uh, 11 and 12, which will begin on July 1st. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to ask everyone, if you would, please stand and let us have an invitation. And then I'll ask uh, Commissioner Haven if he would lead us in the, in the place. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this time we can come here together tonight. We just ask you to uh, bless everyone here and those that couldn't be here but that, that wanted to be tonight. We ask you to help us to uh, have open ears to hear and to listen to the concerns of the people of Macon County. Father, we also ask that you just give each of us uh, as commissioners just an attitude uh, of servitude and, and humbleness that, that uh, we would take into consideration all that we're here tonight and give us wisdom to do what uh, you'd have us to do that would be best for the people of Macon County. We just thank you for all your many blessings and we thank you for allowing us all to have the privilege of living in this great county. In your name I ask. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. We're going to now open the public hearing. Does anybody want to sign up before I turn it in? Nobody on it. There's nobody on. Oh, well, that's going to be a short meeting. Like <laughs> and there's a Good. It's my 36th wedding anniversary, and I've got places to be. <laughs> okay, if, if, if we don't have anyone that would like to speak to the budget uh, at this hearing, I guess we're going to close the public hearing. Uh, unless any of the commissioners would like to make a comment. Well, Mr. Chairman, I think that this shows that. Uh, that the public hasn't had an opportunity. I think it had an opportunity to look at the budget. I think, uh, I think as the county manager continues to work on some items in the budget, but I think the total budget is pretty well set. And uh, there are some items that we continue to work on that, uh, that the county manager is certainly aware of, and that we're all aware of. And, and, uh, but I think the total budget is pretty well set. And uh, you know, some of these folks, uh, they've all got a vested interest to fix the people I see out here. Uh, so, uh, well, I would say that it shows the hard work of our finance officer and uh, and our county manager in preparing a good budget that we can uh, that we can live with in Macon County, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Bill. Uh, any other comments? I would. I agree, with Commissioner Bill. I want to thank uh, Jack for doing a good job on the budget, Evelyn and your staff. You guys did a great job putting it together and uh, we met back in January we lined out some things we felt like were directives like with no tax increase and you guys did that and uh, we appreciate that and also uh, I pushed for some of the fund balance to be allocated uh, not too much Mr. Covered, some and I appreciate that I think that's wise use of our money um, so I'd just like to say thanks for a great job on the budget I think it uh, is a conservative budget, and I think it's one that well serves the people of Macon County. Thank you, Commissioner Corbin. Any, any other comments? Uh, if, if not, we're going Mr. to. Mr. Chairman, I, I just 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 sure. one thing, I, I, and I, I I don't want to cut short. I don't want to <coughs> shortcut some of the other folks that have been mentioned here. A lot of them are sitting out here. Uh, Jack and Evelyn have just been great, and, and, and I thank you guys for all your hard work and and. Uh, you know, it's it's never easy in this kind of environment. But Jack would be the first to tell you that if we don't have the department heads and the people out there working and the and the customers that file into this budget, like the sheriff's department and the schools, and if they're not working lockstep with us and the fire departments, if they're not working lockstep with us, it doesn't work. I'm getting to the health department. <laughs> uh, then you got facial recognition. Then you got the ones. Well, then you got the ones that 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 really have shown enormous flexibility and still don't really know uh, where their pain is going to come from. All they know is it's coming. Uh, and that is the health department and DSS and, and even to a degree the schools. But I think the schools have got a better picture in their mind right now of what's coming down the pipe. And the sheriff's department. 
and so in the sheriff's department with the misdemeanor thing that looked like that was better the last budget i saw so the bottom line is thank you to all the department heads all the folks out there that that put together the best you could people don't understand sometimes how hard it is to just absolutely be guessing and knowing that you're going to have to stand up in front of five guys that, that really want a hard fast answer uh and you know you may not have one uh and and i i admire the folks that have come before us that have stood up uh told us the truth told us what we wanted to hear told us what we didn't want to hear and we know that it ain't over till it's over mr brogner and, and uh, so hang in there we understand uh it, it's not over till it's over uh and again i'm gonna pay a special thank you to to my nana Hale fire department for their flexibility and in, in uh in squeezing what I know was it was a hard budget to squeeze uh, and as a personal thing I've got to thank you guys for doing that you do a great service to the county and it, it seems almost selfish when I stand up here and say but can you cut a little out uh, but you did and I think Nantahala as a fire district and us as a county will be better for it and I, I appreciate them and call Sage uh, being willing to look at their budgets and work on them as hard as they did because these these guys are not professional budgeteers. These guys are people that put fires out and, and save us and come pick us up when we're not doing well. And, and, and yet we're asking them to, to jump into this arena, which Jack and Evelyn will testify to, is not a fun arena to be in sometimes. So I just want to thank those people, especially those that were so flexible and have the biggest and most convoluted budgets I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and and, and you've, you've come forward to us with the straight facts and as long as we're working off the straight facts, we can deal with anything that comes. And so thank you very much for all that. Mr. Chairman, I'll just add that I had a conversation today with the Coast Agency Fire Department. They had a board meeting, I understand, and they've rethought their request. And uh, they realized the economic situation, not only of the community they serve, but of everybody. And so they uh, are going to withdraw their request for their half cent. And uh, they said they could make do, and uh, there again, it's still the best deal going. And uh, but we appreciate Color Sage and what they do, and uh, they know it was a it was a hard choice for a high cent, as it is a hard choice for for the nine hater races, Brian, for their high cent. So I guess Color Sage has rethought that. I think this board was willing to work with them any way we could, and they know that. But uh, they look toward the future. If you remember, I asked the questions. Everything under Brian was good for four years. And when we asked that question, uh, you know, they uh, let everybody, uh, but we're proud of our fire departments. But I, I think for the folks to know that, uh, and you'll be getting letters to many, I'm sure, from the, from the board. And, and uh, but uh, we're very appreciative of Cover Sager, and we're very appreciative, I think, after they saw a little bit more how the budget put together, and especially in these times, they rethought their request. So, uh, but uh, we want to thank the Cover Sager Fire Department. I also would like to thank Jack. Thank you very much, and Evelyn, and the department heads. Up here sitting as commissioners, there's four of us out of the five that's business owners. Running the business is a lot like what you're doing as a department head. It's tough right now. And I want to thank each and every one of them for your hard work, being able to put things together and make it work in your department. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I won't be redundant uh, in any kudos or anything that's been given. And, uh, every one of those were heartfelt and, and uh, we agree across the board. Uh, one thing I would like to say, just a couple of quick things. I appreciate uh, all four of the uh, commissioners working together uh, with me and, and uh, uh, we, we don't always agree on everything, but we work to try and find consensus and that's what I believe we've done and, and for the, is this the third or fourth straight year our budget's going down slightly? So, so uh, we're continuing to be uh, responsible with the uh, taxpayers' money in the county. I, I thank each one of you uh, sincerely uh, for doing that, and and uh, hopefully things are going to turn around. We don't know that, and we have to plan on what is, not what might be, or what we wish it to be. And I think we've. Uh, done a good job of covering all the essential services and a lot of the things that, that we desire that uh, maybe are not essential as a county. We do have uh, two or three more items uh, that, that, that we've got to have a little bit of discussion on 
and and uh, I'm sure we'll get that done uh, shortly. And if we do have to have another budget meeting, uh, we'll, we'll certainly post that in the proper manner at the proper time and, and make sure all proper notifications are uh, issued. Uh, but if there's uh, no further comments, we'll close the public hearing at this time. Okay. Uh, and, and gentlemen, was there a, a Mr. Manager, did you have something with the closed session on, on the property matter that you, was there something that we talked about that you might have wanted to have? Yeah, so there was, but I, I think Mr. Chairman can probably wait for your next week. Next week, meeting, if that's yeah. okay, we can do it next sure. Tuesday evening. I think, uh, I, I thought it was going to be a critical thing tonight, but I, I think we've got a few more days, so we're yeah. still trying to put together some other information that you'll need. So if it's okay with you all, we'll just, uh, in, any objection, uh, If not, I, I think the other, uh, in, any of the other, if there are a few lingering budget issues, we'll be able to uh, tackle those at that time. Uh, in absolutely. Public yeah, absolutely. And uh, if, if there's uh, no other business and we don't need a closed session, I will uh, close this right. meeting. Right. I just yes, mentioned this. Yes, I mentioned this absolutely. information. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Jack. Uh, I gave the commissioners all a copy of this. Uh, there's a Senate bill introduced this week, Senate Bill 517, and I was made aware of it. Of course, I'm in the insurance business, as you know. Uh, this bill would uh, has to do with the freedom that insurance companies have to negotiate uh, services with hospitals, doctors, so on and so forth. And the bill essentially would, uh, as my understanding of my reading of it, which I just just read it uh, yesterday, uh, it would. Uh, it would impede the ability of insurance companies to negotiate those rates. I think the the thought behind this bill is well intended. I think it's to create more competition. But I think in the end, if they didn't, if they don't allow insurance companies to negotiate rates with Angel Hospital, with Mission Hospital, in the end, it's going to cost us all um, more in insurance rates and higher medical costs. And uh, so I, I gave each commissioner and I gave Chester a, a, a bullet point, uh, some information that I've come up with today. And since we all probably need to read this bill ourselves, um, I'd like to suggest that possibly since we uh, are in the business of providing health care for our employees as a county, we might have a vested interest in in, uh, in this bill. So I gave a copy to Chester. Would, it, uh, would we have a consensus that if uh, if we agree next meeting, if we had a, a resolution, would we could we consider a resolution to oppose this bill? Would that be possible? Absolutely, that's possible. I'd have a resolution ready. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if, 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 if you if you and, if you like, to and also can we include the resolution of the of the that's going to impact it's on the General Assembly too about the insurance for residential homes it's in our county and other counties. And this that, this is health insurance. This is health insurance. What what Ronnie's referring to is a bill that essentially recognizes that folks that live on the coast, I already helped me if I'm wrong, but people live on the coast and pay a lot higher in church for hurricanes and I think we'd all agree they they there's a reason That's where the wind blows, the wind blows the down there. Hit. So it would it would in, impact uh, we don't have a lot of hurricanes here, so that would impact our insurance rates just like I think this bill would. Um, so I I just think it, it would be good if they legislature stayed out of the business of Negotiations between private companies, and that's what this has. Is. This been under the radar, Commissioner? I mean, S five seventeen, and there's seventeen hundred out there. I mean, I I've not I, I was made aware of this yesterday. It, it, my understanding is this bill went to committee. That's probably very good. Who sponsored this bill? <coughs> yeah, who is sponsored this bill, Kip? Um, Senator Abadaka from uh, Hendersonville. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's the co-sponsor? Do you know? I'm, I'm not sure. sure. There is a co-sponsor, but I'm not here. If, if you go to the website, which I did, uh, you can go. No, no, he's not. I've, I've been in communication with, with Senator Davis, and I've encouraged him to oppose the bill, and uh, he was given the same information that I gave you guys. But uh, you read it. You may not, by the time you read everything, you may not agree, but in case we are, in case this thing's on a fast track, if we could have Chester prepare a resolution based on this information, we can decide whether or not we want to pass a resolution. And if you want to read any of these Senate bills, gentlemen, or in the public, if you'll go uh, to the North Carolina Legislative.org, and you don't know, it need to know, just put in help, just put in anything about insurance. Yeah. Any bill about insurance will pop up. And then you can pick and choose. There are several in there this, in this session. Okay. Do you, you don't have to have a bill number for one year. 
talking about uh, uh, Bobby does. NCLEG.net. Oh, I know that. I, I, I'm familiar with the website. The, I want to know if there's a, if you have a bill. What's the Senate bill number, number on the on the homeowners? 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 No, I, I'll just pop. I'll look. You just look up insurance. Yeah, I, I know uh, I can get there. It's just easier. Our good friend Senator Davis is a co-sponsor of that bill. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised. And uh, so, but uh, that that bill could uh, the way the way insurance people have told me uh, could impact <clears throat> all residences. And the rural counties, uh, especially. That's the one we talked about. That's right. That bill. The one yeah, that I'd always co-sponsor that. One. Yeah. It won't pull off. That's right. And I think if we if we pass a resolution, I think that that speaks volumes of what we think it might impact the folks in our county. Uh, if I know the bill number, I'll sign it. And if you would include the, the other bill on that, I, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. I, I, mean, care, I, I wouldn't care if it's too. Separate, I wanted to read it, and well, you know, somebody, read somebody like you, Kevin, that's in the insurance business, because that's who called me, right. and that's how I, I knew about it. And of course, now it's a. Uh, but there's, if I'm not mistaken, maybe you remember, Bobby, there is eight or eleven hundred registered lobbyists. No, oh, yeah, I'd say closer to eleven. Eleven hundred registered lobbyists in Rob, most ever now. And when you go to the, and I've had the opportunity to be there a lot this this year, and uh, you can't make it up. They have to tag each other to keep from keep from uh, trying to hit on each other. So that's how many lobbyists are walking the halls and legislature for every county. You saw where I used to was even thinking about getting their own lobbyists. So uh, it's a it's a different time. Okay, any, any other business, gentlemen? If not, we'll adjourn this meeting and our next meeting will be our regularly scheduled meeting on, on uh, Tuesday, which is June 14th. 14th. Right here, 5 West Main Street in the Commissioner's Courtroom. All right. Meeting adjourned. Uh, now, before everybody leaves, remember that the Royal County Association's meeting in Asheville. Yeah. Is that the 18th to 19th?